Now that we have these tools, the additive and multiplicative properties, let's talk about how we can use them to solve equations. Remember our goal. Our goal is to write an equivalent equation in the form of x equals a number. In order to accomplish that goal, we can multiply both sides of the equation by something or add something to both sides of the equation. And in this video, we're going to see how to solve equations that we can get into the form x equals a number using just one move. So let's say we have this equation, x plus 4 equals 8. Now you can probably figure out the solution to that equation just by guessing, but we'll soon be seeing equations where we cannot guess the solution. And so we want to practice the steps involved in finding the solution with a simple equation first. Okay, so we have x plus 4 equals 8. We would like to add a number to both sides so that we end up with x plus 0 equals something. Why? Because x plus 0 is just x. So the question that comes to mind is, what can we add to 4 to get 0? And we immediately hit on the additive inverse of 4, negative 4. So we add negative 4 to both sides. So we have x plus 4 plus negative 4 equals 8 plus negative 4. 4 plus negative 4, that's just 0. 8 plus negative 4 is 4. And so we get the solution x equals 4. More generally, what should we do if we have an equation in the form x plus a number equals a number? In general, if we want to get rid of a term, we need to add its opposite to both sides of the equation. So let's see another example. Let's say we have x minus 3 equals negative 5. Well, subtraction is a little bit tricky. So we'd like to write that as x plus negative 3 equals negative 5. Notice we just rewrote subtraction as adding the opposite. That was a simplifying step. We didn't change the values of either expression at that step. Now the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. So we want to add 3 to both sides. Now the rest is a matter of arithmetic. Negative 3 plus positive 3, that cancels out. That's just 0. Negative 5 plus positive 3 is negative 2. And so we have our solution. x equals negative 2. And we can go back and check that, in fact, negative 2 minus 3 is in fact negative 5. So far I've only phrased this in terms of addition, but remember when we're adding a negative number, we sometimes refer to that as subtraction. In this example, we could have thought I'm subtracting 4 rather than thinking I'm adding negative 4. They mean the same thing. In this example, we could have thought, I'm adding 3 to undo subtraction. So we can also think about this as, if I want to get rid of subtraction, I add the number being subtracted. If I want to get rid of addition, I subtract the number being added. Also note, after adding or subtracting, our next step is going to be to combine like terms. With that in mind, 
we can just write the extra term underneath the term we're going to combine it with and save ourselves some copying. So for example, if I'm solving x plus 2 thirds equals 7 thirds, what I'm actually going to do is add negative 2 thirds to both sides. The 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds cancel and I'm left with x equals 5 thirds. Instead of writing this this way, I could write my x plus 2 thirds equals 7 thirds and just write subtract 2 thirds underneath the constant term. The 2 thirds and negative 2 thirds cancel and I'm just left with x equals 5 thirds. Notice what I've written on the left is what's really happening. What I've written on the right is a shortcut way of writing out what I've written on the left. All right, that's how to get rid of a term. How do we get rid of a coefficient? Let's say we want to solve this equation. Let's say we have the equation 5x equals 15. And again, our goal is to write x equals some number. Well, what we really want to get here is 1 times x equals some number. Right? We want to go from having 5 times x to having 1 times x. So the question is, right, clearly I need to multiply by something. If I added or subtracted a number, I couldn't combine it with this term. If I added or subtracted something with an x in it, I'd end up with x's on the other side, and that's no good. So I want to multiply by something. The question is, what can I multiply 5 by to get 1? And the answer is, I can multiply by its reciprocal. So remember that 5 is 5 over 1. Its reciprocal is 1 fifth. So I have 1 fifth times 5x equals 1 fifth times 15. 1 fifth times 5 is 1. Those cancel out. I'm left with 1x equals 3. Or just x equals 3. Notice that that works, right? 5 times 3 really is 15. This works out especially well if we have a coefficient that's a little bit harder to do arithmetic to. Let's say we have the equation 7 twelfths times x equals 14 ninths. Well, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 7 twelfths, right? We'll have 12 sevenths times 7 twelfths x equals 12 sevenths times 14 ninths. The 12 sevenths and 7 twelfths cancel out, and we're just left with x equals. For this fraction arithmetic on the right, we can use our calculator if we want. So we have 12 sevenths times 14 ninths. Let's make that a fraction, because fractions seem to be good for this problem x is 8 thirds. Let's make sure that works, right? 7 twelfths times 8 thirds. 7 twelfths times 8 thirds. Make it a fraction. It really does equal 14 9. So that really did work. 
To get rid of a coefficient then, we multiply both sides by its reciprocal. Notice that this will never force us to multiply by zero. Since zero hasn't got a reciprocal, we never get zero by taking a reciprocal. Notice that sometimes convenient, instead of thinking about multiplying by the reciprocal, to think of this as dividing. So in our first example that we saw, instead of thinking of multiplying both sides by one-fifth, we could think of dividing both sides by five. And we could write divided by five, and we get x is three. But again, keep in mind, multiplying by one-fifth is the reality. It's what we're really doing. This dividing by five, this is a shortcut. If you're in a situation where division doesn't seem suitable, then write it as multiplication by the reciprocal. There's one more tricky situation that we might find ourselves in where we have an equation where we're just told what the value of the opposite of x is. And we need to remember that we should think of a negative sign in front of x as a coefficient negative 1. Now, the reciprocal of negative 1 is just, well, it's 1 over negative 1, but that's just negative 1 again. Really what we're going to do is multiply both sides by negative 1, which just has the effect of taking the opposite of both sides. If the opposite of x is positive 7 sixths, then x itself must be negative 7 sixths.